This presentation will show you how to use the Reedley College Library Databases to conduct your research. As a student, you will need to conduct research for your classes, and knowing how to find credible resources is crucial. As a Reedley College student, you have access to numerous resources through the RC Library. This includes access to dozens of research databases to which the library subscribes. To access these databases, simply go to the Reedley College Library website and click on Research Databases in the Navigation panel on their home screen. This will open the database homepage where you will be able to use the filtering features to narrow your search to a specific database. Some instructors may tell you to use specific databases for your research. Most databases work like a normal search engine. Simply type your keywords or topic into the search bar of your chosen database. Once the page reloads, your search results will appear. You will be able to refine your research results and select specific features that you want to view. Keep in mind, research takes time, a lot of time, so do not procrastinate. Once you have your search results, there's a few things that you want to be aware of as you're navigating the research databases. So I typed in a simple search, Star Wars, something popular, and you can see here my search results contain almost 30,000 results. So that's a lot of data to sort through to find what I'm looking for. So it's always a good idea to start your research with a broad topic, but as you become more aware of what your assignment is about and what your thesis is going to be, you can narrow your search to something specific. So maybe I want to talk about a specific character, or maybe I want to talk about a specific movie. So from here, my broad topic, I would want to then include additional keywords to start to narrow my search. And that will reduce the number of results that you need to sort through. You can also refine your results by selecting different parameters. Um, you might want to limit it to full text articles only. You might want to limit it to a certain time range. Um, some instructors give restrictions on how old your research can be, so you can set the publication date using this feature. And you can also select the different types of articles you want to look for. Um, you know, if you're okay with any type of source, you can leave it as all results but maybe your instructor said that your research has to come from an academic journal, so you can narrow your search down to only academic journals or any of these features here in the refine results. One of the things I would like to advise is that you do search for full text resources. And the reason you wanna do this is there are a number of results that might come up let me see if I can find one. This one right here. You can see how number seven has a HTML full text as well as a PDF full text. This means that you have full access to this particular resource. Now, if we look at number eight, we can see that it comes from an academic journal, but there's no full text option. So that means when you open a source like this, you're only going to be able to view the details about that particular source as well as the abstract. And you never want to use an abstract as a research source. Abstracts are good for seeing what the article is going to be about and helping you narrow your search, but you will, not, you will never pull a direct quotation from an abstract. So if you were interested in this article, you could see that we have no option to view the actual article. We can only see the details about it. So this is the reason you want to select full text when you do your searches so that you have access to the full version of the article that you can then use as a credible source. The other thing I want to go over briefly is how to 
retain your sources as well as get your citation information for particular sources. So I clicked on this first result here. We have a full HTML text as well as a full PDF text. One of the things I advise is that you always, no matter whether you're going to use the source for sure or not, always save your sources. It's a major hassle to go back and try and find a particular article that you forgot to save or maybe you decided you do want to use it and now you have to try and find it again. So when you're doing research, it's always good to just have a folder on your computer that you're dropping resources into and maybe you don't use all of them. It's easier to delete a source you're not going to use than it is to go back and try and find a source that you didn't save. So I always recommend um, saving your sources. One of the ways you can do this is by actually opening the full text or the PDF. Um, I'll do that now. It's not going to allow me to do it. You have to, um, when you open the PDF, it'll give you the option to download it to your computer. I recommend doing that. Um, that way you have it saved you know, on a hard drive somewhere and you have access to it. If you use Google Drive, you can send PDF articles to your Google Drive. You can email yourself the link. I don't know if you guys can see here on the right hand side of the screen, there's this navigation panel where you have all of these options. If you're someone who prefers pen and paper, you can print the articles from here. Um, but I recommend doing one of these options, either save it to your Google Drive, download it to your computer to your hard drive or email yourself the link and save that email somewhere so that you have access to this article whenever you need to come back to it. In addition to that, you also want to start a running works cited or reference page. Whenever you start to do research, you want to have that running list of citations. That way when you have to do your works cited page, it's a lot easier. Using a research database such as this, they give you the option to cite particular resources. So again, in the right hand navigation panel, you can see what looks like a little document here and if you hover over it, it says cite. You want to click on that. And then from here, it's going to pull up all of the different citation styles you could possibly use to cite this source. And you simply need to scroll down um, if your particular class is using MLA, which most classes do, you would simply scroll down until you see the MLA works cited. Now what you can do is you can copy and paste this into that running document you have set up on your computer. Um, there are some formatting issues, so you always want to double check the formatting. Like you can see here, it has the author's name is in all caps. You do not want to leave it in all caps. So even if you copy and paste this, it is in the correct format, but there's minor issues with it that you're going to need to go back and change according to the MLA guidelines for your class. Um, but that's one of the key pieces you always want to get no matter whether you're going to use the source or not because coming back to find this information can be difficult at times. So that is a brief overview of how to use the results list for this particular database as EBSCOhost, but all of the Reedley College Library databases work in a very similar fashion. Um, so no matter what database you're using, you'll get a results bar and you'll have a results page and you'll have similar um, features where you can refine your results and make sure that you're getting full text articles for your research. All of the databases provide you with the information you need for your citations. It'll have the author, the publication information, all of that, so you always want to make sure you get that information to correctly cite. If you have any additional questions about conducting research or navigating the Reedley College library databases, please contact one of our tutors through the Reading and Writing Center Canvas page. Thank you for watching.